What's going on guys and welcome back to Paint Society Uncut. We have our Honda Civic project here and we have this project here because we're gonna be addressing you know, common paint issues. Uh, guys, listen, this car is 17 years old and today we're gonna be using some rattle cans to go ahead and put a finish on here that will make this look a lot better. We understand it won't be perfect, but uh, for the, you know, the average do-it-yourself or without any type of uh, you know, heavy equipment, I'm gonna show you a couple tricks along the way to Get this looking halfway decent. So it's been a while since we used a roll-on primer and I did have some areas that were sanded down to bare metal and once the car sat outside for a month, it uh, you know got a little rusted. So we're gonna fix that before we start to uh, paint it. Yeah, so all I'm really gonna do is uh, I'm gonna use some 400 grit and I have a little hand pad here and we're just trying to get the rust out of the uh, little areas here. Um, like I said, guys, this project is not gonna be your certified paint repair. This is a home garage, that's why we have it here. We're trying to make my, uh, this car just look better. So I find that 400 grit is just what you need to take out those little rust areas. Now this video is primarily, you know, just to show you how to do the painting. Now this existing uh, primer is a uh, urethane primer that we rolled on. You can check out the video here. And uh, you know, it's a pretty good primer, but I did have some sand through, so. You know, that's what I'm addressing right now. And I'll show you how to take care of that bare metal area before we paint. I'm gonna mask it up. You can go to uh, Advanced Auto and get an inch and a quarter. I like uh, yellow masking tape. It works pretty good. And we'll just go around all our edges. Then we went ahead and put it into the tape thing. It just makes it easier, even for around the house. We're not going crazy with the masking. We're just masking off the panels we don't want there to be paint on. This car has definitely seen better days, but you know, it's a pretty cool uh, project to have because it's got a lot of common uh, paint problems on it, right? Um, that a lot of you guys might have on your own vehicle or let's say you're trying to make a flip or something and you wanna kind of make a car look better, you know, gain a couple extra bucks. Uh, you know, this can be an option as well. You know, you're not gonna get the perfect finish but it's gonna look better, you know? And that's what we're going for. What I like about this project is there's not a whole lot of real expectations. Um, we're just going along with it and uh, seeing what happens. We're testing different products, different equipment on it. And a mask off under here, we'll just go ahead and back mask it. This is what we call back masking. And a mask suspender up probably take about maybe 10 minutes. To take it off, it'll probably take about a half hour between taking the bumper and everything else off and risk uh, ruining something. Yeah, so for the uh, plastic, I do have an automotive-based plastic. That means that one side is treated so it doesn't flake. You don't really need it. Um, you can go to Walmart or Home Depot Lowe's and get yourself the painter's uh, plastic uh, they would use in the house. The only downfall of that is if you're doing a lot of painting and you have a lot of time in between um, and using like a paint gun, then that paint can flake off because on this plastic, one side is treated. So I'll put this in the description. So if you wanna go ahead and get that for your project, it is a must have when painting a, a large amount of panels or being in a spray booth or something small like this, you, you don't really need it. Then I get a razor blade to cut on all those edges. It doesn't take much to cut the plastic. I like to kind of pull it first. That way it creates less air underneath. And then just cut along the tape here. Okay. Now all we're gonna do is just tape down our plastic to uh, the tape that we already have there. Okay. Then you just tape along your back mask tape here. Get that nice and even. Okay. And we'll finish up here at the headlight area. So far it's not really hard to do. I just wanna give you guys the confidence you need to say, hey, maybe, maybe I can do that job. I got an older car, I think, uh, I think it can look a little bit better. Let me, let me try it out, right? 
And so the plastic doesn't move around too much. I just kind of taped it underneath the car so it's tight as can be. So now we're gonna go ahead to our next step. So I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna get some, let's see, self, well, it's self etching primer. And how funny, the metal is showing. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so we have a couple areas here that have um, you know, our metal showing through and self etching is going to protect that metal so it doesn't go ahead and uh, start to rust on us again. If you didn't have any sort of metal showing, you could just do that 400 and then 600 and you'd be good to paint. I'm going to put this on everything just to kind of give it another even surface and that way I can sand it with 600 and I'll have a smoother surface. The smoother the surface, uh, the better the paint's going to come out without going too smooth. So I wouldn't want to do more than 600 to 800, but we're gonna stop probably at 600 after we uh, spray this on. We're not gonna go too heavy. We just wanna kinda cover our surface area. Self etching primer is not meant to like build. It's not meant to fill in any sort of like um, scratches or anything like that or body work. It's just meant to kinda give you a barrier. Mainly focusing on our areas where we had that metal and that's just it. Like we put it on our metal areas only. Now the key is to not sand through it when we go to sand again. So we'll go light with like a 600 and uh, we'll let this flash for about a eh, good 15 minutes. And once it's dry, I'll move you guys on to the next step. So I'm ready to sand this and I got that same hand pad, but this time I have 600 grit. Now you can go between 600 and 800. Uh, this is very, very thin primer. And I, like I said, I don't wanna go through it again uh, to the bare metal. This is just to protect it. And I can go over it dry, okay? Or I can go over it wet. Now, if I'm doing it wet, what the water does is it's gonna go ahead and prolong the paper uh, just a little bit. In this case, I can see that the paper is cutting it perfectly and I don't need to wet sand it. Uh, wet sanding is more of a uh, personal preference in my opinion. Although, uh, if you're doing big areas, it is good to wash down the car before you paint it so all that residue um, can get cleaned off and you won't have it in your paint job. But just feeling this, it's pretty super smooth and without a smooth um, finish before paint, you can never have a smooth finish after paint. So we're ready to paint. Now a quick tip, uh, if you can control your environment, that's great, but most of us can't when we're just out in our garage. So if you pick those early mornings around maybe 70 to 80 degrees, if you had that in your area or the evenings, your paint is gonna perform much better. Now this is acrylic lacquer and our 2K urethane. So um, there has been some questions about, are they compatible, will, will they peel well? This is a 17 year old car. This is our project car and we've done this before in the video just above and so far so good. The results have uh, lasted a good seven months and no signs of flaking or peeling. So uh, we're going to go ahead and I got one can here. Uh, this is B92P and we're going to put it on our panel, light coat, introduce the paint to the panel and then we'll go from there and we'll see if one can's enough. Now a tack rag is a good idea to have right before we paint. This will remove debris and I like to tack around the whole area. That way any debris that's on a plastic won't make its way to the panel. And as mentioned in my other video, make sure you have a towel so you can wipe that tip every few passes. That way it doesn't start to spit on our panel. First coat's going on pretty smooth and it's gonna be stripey. Don't worry about that. We'll clear things up in the next few coats. All right, so the worst thing we can do is not allow it to dry. It's been about 10 minutes and it's pretty dry. We're gonna run our um, tack rag over the surface and then we'll apply our second coat.
So you notice my distance is around maybe four to five inches and I work small areas. The way I work small areas and the reason why I do it is it can stay wet. The paint is wetter, it's gonna be smoother, it's gonna dry smoother. If I'm all over the place, it's gonna land dry and well, the clear coat when it lays on top of that is gonna be dry as well. So I'll separate it into quadrants. I'll do mo no more than about eight to 10 inches of movement and I'll do different quadrants, okay? And I'll carry it along the whole entire fender now. I gotta say this is looking pretty good. Now you might get these little booger spots in here. Don't worry about those. Once the clear hits it, you won't even be able to tell they're there. So here at the second coat, it's been 10 minutes. Now let's say your surface is totally rough. It's not coming out good. You can go ahead and take your 800 grit again, sand the whole thing. That will smooth it out and kind of start off from square one, but you already have that color, so you won't need as many coats. We're gonna go ahead here with one more coat and check it, and I think it should be good. The third coat is dry now. I have the lights off, you might be wondering why. Well, this is a good way to tell, hey, do I have any light spots? So I got myself a little flash right here and I'm gonna tr look at it and I'm gonna see, hey, can I see through to the primer? Like right here, that looks a little bit light, okay, in this area. So I know I need a little bit more there and over here too. So you would only be able to tell when the sun comes out um, if you need it more paint and well, that's too late. So I think one more coat and we should be good. So with four coats on, I have just a little bit left. So it looks like these small cans, uh, eight ounces are good enough for about one panel, give or take. So this is what's gonna separate this job from any rattle can job. It's a 2K high gloss clear, similar to what you get out of a paint gun. That means that it has a catalyst on the bottom that um, was gonna go ahead and mix with the actual clear coat. And when they harden together, it's gonna to give you a uh, 2K. 2K means two parts, okay? And that's similar to what comes out of a paint gun. Now the way you use this is you'll take this red cap right here and um, there's a bladder inside, like I said, a bladder of uh, clear coat. And then it's, we're gonna puncture it uh, by pushing this red um, cap. Now it's a little bit hard, so you gotta kinda put it against something uh, very firm. And when you hear that click, you know it's good to go. It's been punctured. Now from here, it's kind of like a ticking time bomb. Now some say you can get up to a week if you keep it in a cabinet and your temperatures in where you live are around maybe the 70s. Well, that's some beautiful weather we don't have here in South Florida. So I might only get about maybe one or two days out of this before it starts to gel up in the can. But as for our project, we have more than enough time here before it starts to kick. So we're ready for clear. Now, I do not recommend taking a tack rack now and running it over the panel. Sometimes these spray cans can come out really dry and textured and it's gonna pick up all the fibers and the fibers are gonna stay in the panel. Now here's a tip you might wanna follow if you want a smoother finish. Now my finish is pretty good, so I'm gonna leave it alone. But if your finish is not good, take yourself a thousand grit paper and just rub it over the surface. That's gonna go ahead and smooth it out. And then from there, just give yourself one more coat. What that's gonna do is gonna take away all the buildup of the texture. And from just one coat of paint, you're not gonna have that heavy built. For me, I'm good, so I'm gonna leave it. Remember that every job is different. We're ready for our 2K. Now, what's important is we don't wanna get the best finish in the first coat. This is gonna take time to build, probably about two to three coats and we're gonna be good. But it's very important to remember that we don't wanna put four or five, six or seven, something like that. What might look great here you know, in three or four hours will look pretty dull. That's because you're not giving the chance for the clear to breathe and too many coats will trap it. And when it's trapped, well, you're gonna have a dull paint job at the end of the day. Let's go ahead and spray some clear. So first coat laid very nice, but you can see in some areas it's gonna be dry. I mean, that's normal. Uh, this is what I'm talking about, not going too heavy. 
you're not going to believe how it's going to look in those second and third coats. This is a really good foundation for my clear to lay on. Let's give it about uh, five to 10 minutes. So I'm currently sitting around eight minutes now and I can tell it's ready because it's sticky. You see how it's leaving like a fingerprint, okay? And it's not stringy or wet. So I'm ready for that second coat. We'll go a little bit wetter, a little bit slower, and we're gonna watch that gloss start to emerge. And after that second coat, it's starting to look really good. I had a little bug here that I kind of picked out and uh, left a little mark, but I can always buff that out in the end if we need to. And we're about eight minutes later, eight to 10 minutes later. We can tell we're good to go. This stuff kicks pretty quick. So third coat, we're gonna do a little bit wetter and a little bit slower. And then that's it, we're gonna leave it alone. And kind of funny, we got a bug in about the same exact area. Now for this, I got a piece of tape. And looks like I got them. I'll just drop a little bit of clear over that. And we'll buff that later. And about 10 minutes after that third coat, it's looking really good. Now, if you need to step it up and do one more coat, that's fine. Just make sure you keep it ventilated, well ventilated area. You don't want it to be too hot. So when it gets too hot, what happens is the paint is gonna to start to kind of cure on the top without curing on the bottom. And as it starts to cure on the bottom and it's already cured on the top, that's when you're gonna to start to see dye back or little dots or anything like that. So overall, this job looks beautiful. I mean, take a look at that finish from a spray can. Now we do have a couple dirt and debris and if you stay tuned, I'll show you how to remove that and any orange peel that you might have, but I gotta say, it's really good. So we'll allow this to dry. I'm gonna say about a good three hours. We'll leave it just like this, and then we'll unmask it. You don't need to pull off any tape, anything. Just let it be. You're more of a risk of tampering with that clear. It already looks this good. Don't mess it up. All right, so we're actually two weeks out and I haven't been able to touch the car because I've been a little bit busy, but take a look at the gloss. It's still pretty good. We're gonna go ahead and attack that little area where that bug was. Got a dust nib here and I'm gonna sand the whole fender just to see how well the clear takes a sanding and a buff. Okay, so the guys over at Eagle Abrasive send over this little kit. It's a toll cut. This stuff's really good. Um, we're gonna use it to get this little dirt nib out here. Um, it comes with a couple different blocks and it's a starter kit, small variety of paper. So there's two blocks, right? I'm gonna go ahead and use this uh, more squared off one. It has more of like a round one as well, like an oval. We use a square one and there's an oval, but the, the square one, like it's only gonna level off the top and what's underneath it. It's not gonna burn through the areas you don't want it to. We're not gonna use 800, 800 is more for like if you have a run. Uh, I'm gonna just start off with 1200. And the reason why I like these is they're super easy to use and they're strong. You know, you don't use this wet at all, you use it dry. That's the whole point behind Toll Cut is to be used dry. It's designed to be the only paper, one of the only papers that can cut dry without the use of water. So I'm just gonna take off a little of the surface and we're gonna see what happens. Like I said, this one's pretty deep. Short of dabbing it and resanding it would be the only other way to really get this out. So we'll get as good as we can and then we'll buff it. 
So on this, we gotta know where to stop. These little white dots, we can't really do much about because that's from the bug. But these little dots underneath, that's a low spot. And we sand it down considerably and it's still, you know, sanding, but I don't wanna overdo it. They're not too bad, but like, let's say this little dirt nib right in this area, if you can see it right here. If we take it down, right? These are, these are the ones that will sand out, okay? See how it's got the top surface? So you pretty much, You'll sand it down until it goes away. And this is a good way to kind of minimize the area. Now 1200 is a little aggressive for just a dirt nib. Probably would do around 1500 to 2000, but since we were using it for this area right here, we can see that it cuts you know, fairly well. Now looking at the rest of the fender, honestly, it came out clean. The only reason why we're buffing it is just to give it a little bit more gloss, clean it up just a touch, but you could leave it just like this if you're happy with this. Most of you probably will. Uh, I'll show you what to do if you're going to go ahead and take a step further. So I'm going to cut over to 2000 grit because, uh, you know, less aggressive scratch, the easier it's going to be to buff. So I'm going to take my uh, little block here and now I'm going to go around to the little nibs. Okay, there's like one right there. Okay, you can see it. Now, when do you stop? You stop when that little bump right there, a little nib goes away. Okay, you can see how it's kind of flat now. That's good enough in that area. We've got a little one right here, so, you know, same concept actually too. If we take a look right here, right, you'll see the top of the nib here and here. And all you're gonna do is kind of just flatten it out a little bit now it will be a touch flatter in this area generally because you nibbed it out i mean nothing that anyone's really going to notice it looks a lot better than having a dirt nib in the middle of your paint job and then on this area where i had that uh, 1200 grit i'm going to further sand it down to kind of refine that scratch you always want to refine it you know just a little bit more to uh make it easier on buffing. You know, I know this one right here is not gonna be perfect, but you know, that's one of the sacrifices you're gonna to have to give in a garage, right? You're gonna have, you know, things that might fall into your paint uh, that you just can't get out. I mean, there's always the option of repainting, so. Now, before we move on to our next step, it's a good idea to get yourself some spray away glass cleaner and just kind of clean up the surface a little bit. You don't want that residue going back into your new sandpaper. And for our new sandpaper, we're gonna step it up to 3000 grit. Now this is a um, an Eagle Abrasives uh, block right here and I have 3000 here. Now I'm only gonna mainly focus on this area where I kinda wanted to make sure it looks really good and consistent with the rest of the car. So I'm just gonna kinda sand over it. Now 3000 is very easy to buff so we don't have to worry about you know, putting too harsh of scratches in to the panel. And what will 3000 do? Well, it will take out the smallest of dirt nibs and it will kind of, you know, take down the surface just a little bit so you can have a nice, beautiful finish if, let's say yours died back just a little bit. So after 3000, it's gonna obviously look dull, okay? But it's ready to buff. So sort of for buffing, this is what we're gonna do. Um, each one of these foam pads, and I prefer foam, matches up with the corresponding compound polish or ultra fine um, machine polish. And I'm using Milwaukee. This is probably one of the best buffers you can get for maybe one or two panels. I wanna do a full car with it, um, but it's very, very good. It has a 3M adapter. I'll put everything in the description. So we'll start off with foam buffing uh, with the compound foam for our uh, polish and our micro uh, machine polish. It's really only for dark colors. Now I'm sure there's other different uh, materials you can use to get to the same effect, but you cannot um, use this by hand. It will not bring up the shine. So let's go ahead and get some polishing done. I don't like to get too messy with the polish. Just put a little bit on and work it in first. <clears throat> when 
What I'm mainly looking forward to see is how well this clear buffs. And this is the third pass we'll do, and then we'll check it. So uh, now I'm gonna switch over to that black pad, and I'm running the buffer around 1200 RPM, not too, too high. Now, after you start to do this polish, you're gonna see that your paint is gonna start to look really good, okay? So with this blue stage, what this is going to do is like when you're out in the sun and you kind of see those buffing marks all over the place or those streaks, well, this is a type of uh, material that's going to move them, remove them for you. And uh, with this, you kind of want to work it in slow and then it'll start to kind of sweat on you. That's when you know you're hitting the uh, sweet spot. Then to finish things off, I have some quick detailer. Just go over to our panel. Can you believe we achieved this in our garage and it looks like this from spray cans? I'm pretty excited and I hope that you are too. Now, can you go ahead and paint your whole car with spray cans? I don't recommend it. With the cost of material that you'll have and just paint alone, the spray cans you'd probably be able to get yourself at least a 30 gallon compressor and paint one panel at a time but uh for small stuff well it really works well for hoods if you're going to paint a hood that's a little bit tough because it's flat and naturally spray cans don't really work well when they're you know when you're holding them more horizontal so if you can fix up your hood to have it in such a way that it's hanging then you might have a better chance but for small stuff just like this well we just proved it to you Without that much material or much expense, you can fix up your fender or maybe a small part on your car. Now, we do recognize that the rest of the car is pretty badly sunbeaten, but you know, this is our project, and we're going to go ahead and tack different panels throughout this series to learn everything there is about paint. I hope you guys learned something, enjoy this, and hope you guys can do this on your own project. Until the next one, this is Brian from Paint Society reminding you don't overthink it. It's just paint. Let's check out this job.